Book Time presents Metaphysics for Daily Life by St. Germain Prologo The reader has in his hands a work full of depth, despite its apparent simplicity, a depth that can only be found, curiously, in the simplest and purest acts of the common and ordinary human being, everyday life. Practically, all Eastern philosophy reflects on this aspect of man. Western philosophy, on the other hand, ventures into the more intricate paths of the self and its circumstances, and rarely, very rarely comes down from the clouds to deal with the daily life of ordinary mortals. It is for this reason that the metaphysics for daily life, which we have compiled to form the present work, has a double importance for us, since in addition to being full of keys, prayers, blessings, and advice for every day. It constitutes, as in fact the metaphysics taught by Connie Mendez is characterized, one of the few disciplines dedicated to the spirituality of Western man that deals with daily chores and their enormous importance. Nothing would become of the most profound and elevated philosopher or thinker if he forgot at a given moment to fulfill the simplest aspects of his personal maintenance. Gautama Buddha himself put his life at risk when, determined to find enlightenment, he tried to forget the most mundane acts and dedicated himself only to meditating for days, weeks, months, and years at a time, he stopped nourishing his body. A simple girl, a simple shepherdess, rectified the way to the Buddha himself, fed him, cleaned him, and showed him that nothing would be of him, nor of his doctrine, if he forgot the most primary aspect of the human being, nourishment. Soon after, having recovered and having understood this, Guatemala found enlightenment. And while we are on the subject of blessings, which occupy a good part of this compilation, we would like to make our own the words of another great metaphysical master, the American Charles Fillmore, who says in this regard, whatever you have, however inadequate it may seem, bless it. Even if you have no money and no food, bless your hands, your mind, your skills, your friends, the air you breathe, the sun that shines on you. Bless it all, and your life will be blessed with riches hitherto unsuspected by you. For the present anthology we have made a journey through the works of various metaphysical authors who deal with these topics so close to man and that for the same reason we often forget, or what is worse, we ignore, because we are busy with much more important or deeper things. We sincerely hope that this book will be of great use and that the reader will reflect on those aspects that make up the most important adventure that human beings go through daily life. Daily Life I am the law of forgiveness and the violet flame transmuting all inharmonious action and all human creation from now until the moment of my individualization. I am here and I am there, and I am there in all humanity, so that whatever I say from now on includes every human being. I am the presence of Almighty God that keeps the violet fire burning in my whole being and my whole world, and keeps me sealed in a pillar of violet fire that instantly transmutes every human creation that comes back seeking redemption around me, through me, compressed against me, or that I contact in any way. My beloved presence transmutes every imperfection I may have created, and with the authority of I am replenishes me with all the strength and perfection I desire. I am now the ascended being that I am desiring to be. I am the conquering presence, and I command my beloved presence to perfectly rule my mind, my home, my affairs, and my world. I am the magna electronic energy that flows, that fills, that renews every cell of my mind and body right now. In the name, by the power and authority of the beloved presence and the three times three. I am the resurrection and life of all perfection in my life stream. From my eternal youth and beauty. From my agility and freshness. From my perfect vision and hearing. From my perfect health. From my unlimited strength and energy. From my perfect teeth, my skin, my bone structure. From my perfect symmetry. From my unlimited cash fund. From everything perfect in my world, 
in my life. From all the faculties of my causal body. From my divine plan already fulfilled. I ask to be protected against all intrusions that of necessity I go through. I am enveloped in my electronic circle eternally sustained, for I am the sacred fire. Everything that approaches me is now and always transmuted in my aura, because I am not here to fulfill a karmic lapse. I am here to radiate and remain untouched by all lower vibrations. I am meek and humble of heart. I am divine love, divine intelligence, divine power, divine balance, and divine breath. I am wealth, elegance, joy, happiness. I am the body of Christ. I am the triad. I am all noble faculties, talents, and virtues. I am the immaculate purity that keeps my body, my clothes, my home, my conscience, and my world spotless. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the open door that no one can close. I am all that is perfect in me. I am the only power contained in me, the only presence, and the only harmony. I am one with the Father. I am the guardian presence that nothing and no one can affect, frighten, or displease. I am God in action. All this I acknowledge and ask for all my human brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father, that you have heard me. I'll give you whatever you want. Write down on a piece of paper, and in order of importance to you, all the things that you desire, without fear of asking too much, for the power that I am about to make known to you knows no limitation. Read your list when you wake up and before you go to sleep. Think often of your desires. Enjoy imagining them and whenever you remember them say, Thank you, Father, that you have already given the order for them to be granted to me. Do not tell anyone what you are doing. This is very important because if you tell anyone, all the strength dissipates and you will not see your desires fulfilled. That is all. Now. For your greatest satisfaction, be splendid with yourself. Don't say on your list that you want a little house even if it is small. Ask for the size that suits you and pleases you fully. If it is money, mention the amount. If it is work, indicate what kind, the salary to which you aspire, the conditions and the most convenient locality for you. In your first list, put simple things so that you can get used to seeing wonders fall and happen, because as you have never done this, you will not believe that it is possible, and I warn you that this doubt can cost you that you do not see what you have asked for. It is natural that doubts and distrust come to you because the idea is very new to you. But when you feel skepticism, pessimism, etc., take out your list, reread it, and give thanks again. Giving thanks for what you have not yet seen is the most positive way to manifest faith. Jesus Christ recommended it on several occasions, as you will recall, notably, before feeding 5,000 people with five fish and five loaves of bread, when he looked up to heaven and gave thanks at the breaking of the first loaf of bread. Ah, you will be surprised that every time you read your list, you will have to cross out some points because they have already been done. Then you will have to do it again, putting other points in the most important places. Don't worry about this. It's natural. It happens to everyone. What happens is that your higher self tells you that many of these desires are already within your reach, while others are not. Ah, uh, don't start to think about how you are going to get them, because this is counterproductive. The great spiritual force is beyond your human comprehension. Accept what it gives you with gratitude, do not interrupt or inhibit it, and above all, do not think or say, or exclaim when you see your desires realized, how will it do? This does not seem possible. Not any of that. What happens is that the great spiritual force, whose real name is the law of precipitation, is completely impersonal and places its gifts in the most harmonious and most natural places, taking advantage of the channels already established in your own life. 
She is not interested in exhibitionism or surprise. It only does its job of delivering what you ask for, where it suits you best. The 15 points. To know if I am really on the path. 1. If I always look for the good in every situation, person, and thing. If I resolutely turn my back on the past, whether good or bad, I live only in the present and the future. 3. If I forgive everyone without exception, no matter what they have done, and then I forgive myself, I will be able to live in the present and the future. Wholeheartedly. If I consider my work or daily task as something sacred, trying to fulfill it as best as possible, whether I like it or not. 5. If I do everything in my power to manifest a healthy body and a harmonious environment around me. 6. If I try to render service to all the others without doing it in a majestic or annoying way. 7. If I take every opportunity to make the truth known to others in a wise and discreet manner. 8. If I unconditionally avoid criticism, refusing to listen to it or support it. 9. If I dedicate at least a quarter of an hour to meditation and prayer. 10. If I read at least seven verses of the Bible or a chapter of some instructive book about the truth for this era. 11. If I make a special daily treatment to ask for or demonstrate understanding, it is necessary to affirm it knowing that God is with us, or to entrust the ascended Lady Master Nada of the Ruby Ray, as well as the hosts of the Golden Ray. 12. If I train myself to give my first thought to God upon awakening. 13. If I pronounce the verb for the whole world every day, either our daily exercises, or especially, let us say, at 12 o'clock in the day. If I practice Jesus' golden rule instead of just admiring it. He said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The important thing about the golden rule is that we should practice it even if others do not practice it. Practice towards us. But also, there is no rule that does not have its opposite, so do not allow others to do to you what you would be unable to do to them. 15. If I become perfectly aware that what I see is nothing but a mirage, which I can transform by means of scientific prayer. In order to demonstrate harmony and perfection of everything in your life, ask yourself once a week if you are fulfilling all these points. Wherever forgiveness is mentioned, the prayer of the violet flame can be inserted, I am the law of forgiveness and the transmuting flame of all errors committed by me and by all mankind. Of course, this is for students who already know the flames. Life One of the aspects of God, or of that which we call God, is life. God is life. Among so many other things, God is our life and the life of all that exists. All life is one, yours, mine, that of the plants, the insect, the bird, etc. It does not belong to us individually. It is an immense life in which we are floating. We are each a sponge in an ocean of life. We are accustomed to think that each one in isolation possesses a certain amount of life and that this, like the water in a small well, surrounded by earth, evaporates and dries up and that something dirty can fall on it or something can infect it and contaminate it. No. Absolutely nothing can happen to it, to that immense, inexhaustible, and indestructible spring. It cannot die. It is a spring of energy that flows through us, that penetrates us, and therefore keeps us alive. In other words, we are living beings because we are in it. Since the whole race believes that the human being is a separate and isolated little pocket of life, that he is susceptible to disease, to the wear and tear of years, and to death, the whole race manifests that belief, but when that opinion is erased, by dint of denying it and affirming the truth, they will cease to sicken, to grow old, and to die. The more the truth is thought and meditated upon, the sooner will mankind be rid of these false beliefs, for truth is cumulative. 
Know the truth, and it will set you free, Jesus said. And also, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, until it was all leavened. It could not be clearer. The kingdom of heaven is not that which we have been offered for another plane if we behave ourselves. It is the state of bliss, harmony, and advancement that we are seeking here. This meditation that is making clear to you something that you did not know, that is stirring up cells that were dormant, is the leaven that Jesus refers to. This truth that you hear today will continue to work in you until one day suddenly the idea will light up in you as a whole. For the whole mass will have fermented. We are accustomed and so hardened by habit to see each other that we are not amazed by the miracle that represents a character that speaks, thinks, moves, hears, and lives only by itself, without any cable that connects it to an electric current, without it being sowing in the earth, and that other miracle that happens every minute, a child that when separated from the mother that communicates its life, continues to live. And none of this attracts our attention. When all this should provoke us constant wonder and contemplation, what is it, how is it, or do you think that this marvel, this miracle is made by a cup of coffee with milk? Food and eating are leftovers from the animal kingdom. They are animal instincts. Since they do not yet think or react, they do not have intuition but instinct. They are still governed by that primitive cell which was a stomach or rudimentary desire. They blindly obey the principle of generation and the law of evolution that orders the combination of elements and the gradual alteration of vibrations. Man is already thinking, rational and intuitive. His vibrations are intensified by thinking higher. By listening, understanding and accepting the truth of all things, he accelerates his frequency and of course rises in plane. Meditation, as is thinking deeply and purposefully about these high concepts, advances the being rapidly. That is why I am making them meditate. We are God's children, made of his own substance. We are sponges in an ocean of life. We do not need external nourishment. When we grasp this truth and realize it, we find ourselves eating less and less, automatically without making any effort or sacrifice. The leaven of truth will have penetrated the whole mass. The cells of the body will be vibrating at high frequencies. Life is itself food. It is health, energy, beauty. It is life. Metaphysical Beauty Salon when one enters fully into metaphysics, that is, when one is willing to exchange the carnal consciousness for spiritual consciousness, one leaves the plane of struggle and earthly laws and enters the plane of spiritual law and smooth and perfect manifestation. To get rid of fat, weight, bulk, rashes, pimples, spots on the skin, wrinkles, hair loss, imperfections in general, the Ascended Master St. Germain has outlined a series of small and gentle procedures to be performed every day without effort, without exercise, without dieting, without masks, massages, or operations, for all this stems from the belief in the power of external effects. When this is a manifestation of error and false belief that are rooted in the subconscious. In other words, that which is based on error is a lie. Truth is perfect and is the cause of manifested perfection. In other words, the external effects are that fatness is the effect of what one eats or that the metabolism is wrong, etc. There you have two external effects, neither of them is a cause. To attack the cause, you must first know that it arises from a false belief of an unconscious mind. The first and main cause is that you have accepted when someone suggested in front of you, or that you read in the press that things that enter through the mouth can become factors of ugliness. The Master Jesus said very clearly, it is not what enters through the mouth that harms a man, but what comes out of the mouth, because it comes from the heart, in other words, the spoken word, the verb, is a decree that comes from what at that time was called the heart, which is the subconscious. 
Our beloved Ascended Master St. Germain has dictated the following exercises for slimming, by means of which fat disappears without leaving folds of skin. The skin is beautified and whatever ails is healed. 1. Every day, standing in front of a mirror, with the left hand raised with the palm to the sky, and with the right hand rubbing the belly in rotation from left to right, in the same clockwise direction, say out loud, or mentally, as you like best, I am the magna electronic energy that enters, flows, and renews every cell of my body and mind, eliminating everything that is not similar to it, right now. 2. To proceed in other parts of the body that force to use the right hand and, consequently, it is necessary to lower the left hand that polarizes, mentally see a circle of silver light that goes up and down around the body, rub circularly all the parts that you wish to slim, the one who is thin and wants to have fuller forms can also use it with that intention, repeating the affirmation. Another way to achieve this is by placing your hands on your shoulders and sliding them all over your body up to your feet, feeling the symmetry and perfection of the shape you wish to have. The affirmation given above can vary according to the result you wish to obtain. For example, I am the magnificent electronic energy that enters, flows, renew, and beheals, or that rejuvenates. For today only. Decalogue by Francisco Antonio Z. Perez. I will be happy. I will expel from my spirit every sad thought. I will feel more joyful than ever. I will not. I will regret nothing. Today, I will thank God for the joy and happiness he gives me. I will try to adjust to life. I will accept the world as it is and try to fit in. If something happens, I will not regret or be mortified. I will be grateful that it happened because my will to be happy was put to the test. Today, I will be master of my nerves, of my feelings, of my impulses. To succeed, I must have control of myself. I will work cheerfully, with energy, courage, and passion. I will make my work fun. I will check that I am able to work with joy. I will check my small triumphs. I will not dwell on failures. I will be pleasant. I will not criticize anyone. If I start to criticize a person, I will change the criticism into praise. Every person has his faults and his virtues. I will concentrate my attention on his virtues and forget his faults. Today, I will avoid arguments and unpleasant conversations. 5. I will eliminate two plagues, haste and indecision. Today, I will live with calmness and patience, because haste is enemy of a happy life, and I will triumph. I will not allow haste to harass me nor impatience to overwhelm me. Today, I will have confidence in myself. I will face all problems with determination and will, and leave none for tomorrow. I will not be afraid, I will act courageously. The future belongs to me. Today, I will have confidence that God helps those who struggle and work. I will not envy those who have more money, more beauty, or more health than me. I will count my possessions and my ills. I will compare my life with others who suffer more. I will try to solve today's problems. The future resolves itself. Destiny belongs to the who struggle. Today, I will have a program to carry out. If something remains for me to do, I will not despair. I will do it tomorrow. 9. I will not think about the past. I will not hold grudges against anyone. I will practice the law of forgiveness. I will assume my responsibilities and will not blame anyone for my problems. Today, I will prove that God loves me and rewards me with love. 10. I will do a good deed to someone. To whom? I will look for someone to do it, without being found out, and, upon, when evening comes, I will see that God has rewarded me with a day full of happiness. And tomorrow I will make a day, like today. Give me calm, sir. 
Let me feel the deep peace present in every experience, the harmony of living. Give me calm, Lord, so that I may enter into the deep peace within my heart. Give me peace so that I may see the blessing hidden in all things. Keep me from idle words and vain fancies. Calm the race of my mind so that my thoughts may have the clarity and easy movement of the fresh air I breathe. I seek the serenity of a calm lake, the strength of an oak, the unchanging and solid power of the mountains. Give me calm, Lord, so that I may spend time enjoying the peace and beauty you have created around me. I need time to think, time to consider solutions to problems, time to turn my inner self and my life into divine love and order. Give me calm, Lord, is my prayer, and as I pray, I feel your presence coming me more, I feel the softness of your hand in mine, I am calm, I am still, I am at peace. Thank you, Father, that you heard me. What do you feel? There are only two feelings that a human being can feel, love and fear. It is generally supposed that there are innumerable kinds of feeling, but this is an illusion. Every feeling, when analyzed, turns out to be one of two, love or fear. What is anger? For anger is nothing else but fear in disguise. In chemistry, we often find that a substance presents itself under entirely different appearances. For example, black carbon is the same thing, chemically, as diamond, although they appear so different, both are said to be allotropic forms of carbon. In the same way, anger, hatred, jealousy, criticism, selfishness are but allotropic forms of fear. Joy, interest, the satisfaction of success and achievement, the appreciation of art are allotropic forms of love. The great difference between the two feelings is that love is always creative and fear is always destructive. A sense of love rebuilds the body, lengthens life, gives inspiration, expands business, opens roads in a hundred directions, and tames obstacles. Fear destroys the body, kills inspiration, paralyzes business, covers everything with a veil of death. It is up to us to decide which of these two feelings should rule our lives. God is love, and he who dwells in love dwells in God, and God dwells in him. Are you dynamic? The dynamic person. What is a dynamic person? Many people think they would like to be considered dynamic, but they don't seem to have a very clear idea of what that expression means. Sometimes they think it means being aggressive or cocky. Others believe it means attracting attention in some less flashy but equally effective way. In reality, nothing could be further from the truth. A dynamic person is one who does something to change the world and people. The magnitude of his or her work may not be great, but it is a fact that the world is a little different because that person has lived and acted in it. This is what it means to be a dynamic person. Dynamic people like St. Paul or Washington or Napoleon changed the lives and destinies of millions of people, and their works are known to all, but there are many men and women whose works are hardly, if at all, known, and yet on their own scale they are dynamic because they have changed the world in a small way. If you actually get something done, no matter how small, you are dynamic and the world is different because you have lived in it. If you are just pretending to do, or talking about it, or making appearances, you are not dynamic. You are an actor, or actress, you are an empty shell, and nobody would want to be like that. He who does something in a new and better way is dynamic. He who makes two grains of wheat grow where before they grew but one is dynamic. He who builds up a business that serves the public or finds employment for others is dynamic. He who produces a useful invention is dynamic. One who composes good music, good poetry, good paintings or sculptures is dynamic. One who heals is dynamic. One who teaches well is dynamic. 
All of these leave the world a little different than they found it. Washington changed the course of history, and you may change just one person's life by healing them, teaching them, or simply inspiring them by your own demonstration. The bottom line is that something has been transformed in the big picture. There are foolish people who are satisfied with being called dynamic. They are satisfied with appearing. They spend their energies on their appearances. They adopt an imposing attitude and talk grandiloquently and, of course, vaguely of the great things they have done or intend to do. They give high-flown names to insignificant things, and all this is nothing but a complicated bluff and is the opposite of dynamic. The secret of being dynamic is believing that God works through you, no matter what you are doing. Putting your service first and being as sincere, practical, and efficient as you can. If you put this system into practice, even if only for a short time, you will be amazed at the amazing results you will get, and you will find yourself becoming a truly dynamic person. To truly serve well is to be truly alive. By their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew 7-20The Realization There is a big difference between what you really believe and what you think you should believe or what you want to believe. You demonstrate or manifest in all your outer life what you really believe. Other ideas are not externalized. If one day you come to believe something else, that day you begin to manifest it, that is, to experience it, not before. It is not enough to say that you know that such and such a thing cannot hurt or affect you if you only have this opinion intellectually. If you feel even slightly that they cannot harm you, the case is different. This is what we call realization, knowing it and feeling it, or having the conviction. It is not enough to repeat that everything will be all right unless you believe what you are saying. It is not enough to say superficially that God is with you and taking care of you unless you believe it or realize it even to a slight degree. The only object of doing spiritual treatments is to increase your own realization of the truth that you have already accepted, that is, that error and fear have no power over you when you do not yield to them. Luke, in chapter 10, verse 19 quotes the Master's words saying, Nothing, in any respect can harm you. Many people ask to be given an affirmation. Apparently, they are under the impression that repeating a magic phrase will solve their problem, but this could not be further from the truth. Your problem is with you because of a false, erroneous belief that is within you, that is, a wrong thought process. Where there is inharmony, there is always fear present, and an affirmation will not destroy this fear. You must refuse to be intimidated by apparent danger, whatever it may be, and put your trust in the love of God, then the fear begins to disappear. Affirmations are reminders of what we must believe, but it is the change of our mental process, from error to truth, that brings the demonstration. Not the repetition of a phrase. When you need to be guided in an important decision, you have to think and believe that God is guiding you, and you will be guided. Matthew quotes the Master's phrase in chapter 6, verse 7, When you pray, do not make use of vain repetitions, as the pagans do. Notice what he refers to, those people who pass beads of a rosary, repeating Hail Marys and Our Father, and he calls them pagans. Are you kidding yourself? The Christ teaching is a dynamic gospel. It really changes all things. It turns the history of the individual life into something very different from what it would have been without that teaching, and this is the proof. Those who do not understand our teaching sometimes say that we deceive ourselves, that we pretend to be healthy when we are sick, and that we pretend that everything is going very well when in fact it is going badly. They think that we try to hypnotize ourselves by calling black white. Of course this is false. The one who acts in this way is not practicing the Christ doctrine. What we do is to turn our backs on the negative picture, clinging to the positive truth, and so we heal the visible picture. 
That is the reality, and that is the verification. That is the check. If the outer picture changes, you are working correctly. You are not deluding yourself or enjoying emotional dissipation. If the outer picture does not change in a reasonable time, you are deluding yourself. You are not working correctly and you have to change your system. The outer change may still be incomplete or slight, but as long as there is some change, it means you are working right. You are not fooling yourself as long as you are getting results. There is no such thing as invisible demonstrations. At all times, one's own mentality is manifesting itself in the world of outward appearances. Excuses and betrayals are useless, knowing that the external picture reveals the truth and that no appeal is possible. To God, thank you for this wonderful truth, for it gives us an infallible method to recognize and master limitation and error. By their fruits ye shall know them, Matthew 7-20. Domain A philosopher said, Life is adaptation to external circumstances, and explained that every living thing shows an amazing tenacity in keeping itself alive, growing, and adapting to the conditions in which it has to live. This is true for the plant and animal kingdoms. It is astonishing to see how butterflies, insects, animals have colors that confuse them with the vegetation of the place where they live. We suppose that to defend themselves from man, intelligent life itself, which employs all means to preserve the different offspring until they can defend themselves. But this is not correct with respect to the human being, since man has already transcended all the unconscious stages and has developed his latent powers. The Bible teaches that man has no need to conform to the conditions in which he is born, nor to resign himself to anything. On the contrary, resignation, that attitude which has hitherto been called a virtue, is in reality an offense against intelligence, it is mental and physical laziness, and it goes against all the instinctive impulses of the individual. Of course, all this is due to the ignorance of the race, and when man learns that the impulse of his soul is the voice of God in him, he ceases to bend and seeks to dominate. Kowtowing, or resignation, implies cowardice or at least the acceptance that the external possesses superior powers. This is what the first commandment calls idolatry. Thou shalt have no false gods before me. The Bible says that man has dominion over all things, and this must be taken seriously. It does not mean that we should openly rebel, that is, physically, for example, against an official ordinance that we do not like, or against some established social custom, or against some moral or family duty just because we feel like not fulfilling it. It means that we have mental powers to transform the external, and by developing our spiritual nature, we will never be able to act arbitrarily towards others. Our actions would be, then, always for the good of all, and therefore for ourselves. Because we are human and no longer animal or vegetable, we possess intuition, reasoning, and common sense, that is, divine wisdom, and by using these faculties, we will know what we are uncomfortable with in regard to the condition of the moment. The second step is to know the truth, that is, to meditate on the spiritual reality that is hidden behind the material appearance, and that is enough to see the appearance transform, no matter what it is, because if it does not depend on us, and it seems just and absurd, or inconvenient, the spiritual law with its infinite channels surprises us with a solution we would never have thought of. The way to develop the spiritual nature is to practice scientific prayer. Achieving, if nothing else, a demonstration, first to convince us of this truth, then to teach us the technique. Every time you get a demonstration, either for yourself or for another, you gain increased spiritual understanding, and you learn more metaphysics than in many hours of reading or listening to lectures. Do not waste time trying to answer theoretical or doctrinal questions. Any conclusion on these will be just another intellectual concept, and you know that the intellect materializes everything. 
heal someone, or fix a situation. Do an affirmative treatment of divine understanding, and a few days later you will find yourself understanding perfectly the theoretical or doctrinal issue that was confusing you, instead of having brought up yet another intellectual formalism. Don't expect to understand everything about God with just a few weeks of study. It is useless for an algebra student, for example, to understand the binomial theorem if he cannot understand a simple equation. Learn the following. We always have enough understanding and enough power to, to dominate whatever enters our lives. Life takes care of her young. She commands nothing that is above our strength or beyond our powers. We must always, always use the truth we know. Use what you have. Many say, I want to advance more quickly. I want to gain more understanding, and as a rule they ask for a list of books to read or some advanced course to follow. This attitude is mistaken. It implies that spiritual advancement concerns intellectual activity, or that it is merely the acquisition of knowledge. This is true as far as mathematics is concerned, or physics, or chemistry for example, but not so in metaphysics. Spiritual growth comes by practicing what we already know. Instead of reading one more book, reread your favorite book and apply its teachings more carefully than before. Healing a cut finger or solving a business problem is enough to teach you infinitely more than the intellectual study of an entire library can ever teach you. What you must understand is that the world in which we live is a mental concept and not an objective reality. Every demonstration you make makes it easier for you to understand this truth, whereas intellectual study gives you nothing in this respect. Metaphysics, like music, is both a science and an art. In metaphysics, it is absolutely accurate that one learns by doing. Explode your stumble. Success consists in mastering difficulties. All those who have succeeded in any way have succeeded by overcoming inconveniences. Where there are no stumbling blocks to remove, anyone can succeed and that cannot be called a success. There was a time when establishing a telegraph line from New York to Boston presented many difficulties. Later this was very easily accomplished, but then to get the transatlantic cable laid was a great feat because of the difficulties to be overcome. Later the laying of submarine cables became routine, but the radio across the ocean presented problems that for some time were insurmountable. Then those same problems were solved as well. There are no problems that cannot be overcome by quiet and persistent spiritual treatment and judicious and appropriate activity. If you have an injury or stumbling block that appears to oppose success, don't accept it as such, capitalize on it or exploit it, Use it as an instrument of your success. The great author H. G. Wells had to resign from a poorly paid and unattractive placement because of ill health, which forced him to stay at home and spend his time writing books that made him a world-renowned author. Edison became deaf as a post and decided that this would make him concentrate better on his inventions. Theodore Roosevelt was a sickly child who was told he had to live in seclusion and take care of himself. He was very nearsighted and nervous. Instead of accepting these recommendations, however, he worked hard to develop his body and famously became the great hunter and strongman, President of the United States. Gilbert wrote his famous Zarzuela Pinafora in bed with agonizing pains. The owner of a famous London fashion house was the wife of a poor salesman who was attacked by tuberculosis. She had never gone into business and had no qualifications when she was faced with the problem of supporting her husband and two children. She had no capital, only good taste in clothes and faith in prayer. Today she is a rich and famous woman who says, I thought I would like to be able to sell the kind of dresses that I had never been able to buy. Whatever your stumbling block, explore it. It always seems that the problem itself is the most difficult of all, but spiritual treatment and a courageous determination can overcome everything. 
Problems are the signs that point the way to God. How to truly pray. Think about God. Mentally review some of the truths you know about Him, His perfect goodness, His infinite intelligence, His presence in everything, His limitless power, His boundless love. Affirm, claim that all of this, that He is God, is in you, and believe it. Or read some scripture verses, psalms, gospels, whatever is within your comprehension, or any favorite spiritual book of yours, and affirm believingly that God himself is doing this prayer through you. According to the Lord's Prayer, forgive everyone who needs your forgiveness, without exception and without mental reservation, and do it willingly. Ask God to forgive you all the mistakes you have made until today. Say that you accept his forgiveness, and do it willingly. Claim that God is inspiring you now, teaching you now, healing you now. Claim that he is giving you the greatest of all gifts. Himself. Having this you will have everything else. Whatever it is, big or small that is bothering your life, claim that he is fixing it and believe it. Give thanks for the privilege of visiting with God. Give thanks in advance for the peace of mind, harmony, and spiritual breakthrough that this prayer will be giving you and believe it. Everyday Sentences Victory over limitation. Christ, mighty in my midst, gives me victory over every limitation. As a child of God, I am healthy, happy, and prosperous, wise, loving, and free. Blessing for a school child. I entrust you to God's protection and care. His presence guards and protects you. His wisdom guides and directs you. His life sustains and perfects you. His understanding inspires those who teach you. His love is in the hearts of those around you. You go to meet your good. Protection prayer. God's light surrounds me. God's love surrounds me. God's power protects me. God's presence watches over me. Wherever I am, God is with me. May be applied to other people, money blessing. Bless all the money you receive or give with these words of increase. Divine love through me blesses you so that in my hands you may multiply and in the hands of the one who gave it to me. Release of joys. I am a strong and vital child of God. I have only healthy, happy, normal reactions to the air I breathe, the food I eat, and the conditions of my life. I give thanks for all this good. Two correct undesirable habits. Archangel Michael, with your legions of light, in the name of my beloved I am presence, and in the name of all humanity, we ask you to cut off and separate from us all human creations of imperfect tendencies and habits that are pressing through and around us. Replace them with purity, perfection, and harmony. Help us to liberate all life in this city, country, continent, and throughout the earth. Fill humanity with faith in the goodness of God and help it to make conscious contact with His divine plan. I am thankful for when you need money. I am the resurrection and the life of my unlimited supply of money, of all the perfection of my world and of my divine project, now fulfilled. To always remember, beloved presence of God in me, Beloved Archangel Chamuel, ignite the pink flame of God worship through me, my money and supply, double them, triple them, and turn them into my financial freedom now. Thank you. At night at bedtime, Father, I forgive all who need my forgiveness and myself, and although I know that on the spiritual plane there is nothing to forgive, I forgive because in this way I transform the idea of the one who believes in doing me evil. I invite my invisible guides to use my dream to do good where it is appropriate. Thank you, adored father. The Consecration of the House The blessing given here to consecrate or purify the house or room has been useful for countless years, and by means of it many have received good in abundance. Gently, place yourself in the main room, and in a loud voice pronounce these words. In this house there is only one presence, the presence of God, the good. 
No evil can enter here. God, the good dwells here. Anyone who enters will feel the divine presence of the good. Here there is only one presence, the presence of life. There is no sight of death and no fear of death. There is only life. All fear is cast away. Anyone who enters here will feel the presence of the pure and blessed life of God. There is only one presence here, the presence of truth. Nothing false can enter. In this house there is no deceit, no envy, no jealousy, no selfishness. All false thinking is cast out. Anyone who enters here will feel the presence of truth. There is only one presence here, the presence of health. No sickness can enter, no impurity, no fear. All sickness and infirmity shall be cast out. Anyone who enters here will feel the presence of health. There is only one presence here, the presence of purity. No impure thought can enter. I dwell in the pure and blessed presence of God. Anyone who enters here will feel this pure and blessed presence of God. In this house sits peace and harmony. Here I dwell in the presence of peace. No thought of unrest or discord can enter, no irritability, no fear. The presence of God is peace. Anyone who enters here will feel the presence of peace. Prosperity dwells in this house. No good shall be wanting to me. There is no lack of satisfaction. Anyone who enters here will be pleased, content, and prosperous. In this house, beauty dwells. Here there is only one presence, the presence of the beautiful. In God there is all spiritual beauty. This house is glorified by His blessed presence. Anyone who enters here will feel the beauty of every holy and perfect thing. Here there is only one presence, the presence of wisdom. Necessity, ignorance, doubt, and superstition are cast out. God who is all wisdom dwells here. I live and move in the presence of wisdom. There is only one presence here, the presence of joy. It manifests everywhere. No sorrow can enter. Sorrow is cast away. Here dwells the joy of the Lord, therefore I abound in joy. Anyone who enters here will feel the presence of joy. Here only love dwells, filling all the space of this house. God is love and love dwells here. All feelings of anger, hatred, and revenge are cast out. In love I live, I move, and I have my being. Anyone who enters here will feel the presence of his holy love. I thank you, O Heavenly Father, that your presence occupies this house, for I live and move in you, most holy Christ, for I live in your life, in your truth, in your integrity, in your peace, in your wisdom, in your joy, in your prosperity, and in your love. I am grateful that all who enter here feel your presence. Blessing of the Home We shall be satisfied with the good of your house. Psalm 65, 4 Jesus Christ is the head of this home. He is the only presence and the only power here. He lives eternally in the heart of every member of this family and blesses all who enter its doors. The presence of Christ, who dwells in this home and in the hearts of those who live here, protects against sickness, accidents, disharmony, or scarcity. His presence, which fills this home, is the true presence of life, joy, security, love, and prosperity. This home is a haven of peace and happiness. No negative thought or word can disturb the atmosphere of this home. No wrong action can be taken. Only joy, kindness, cooperation, and service are here. This is the abode of good. Every day this home is sanctified by the living presence of Christ. Each day I praise him for his loving, protecting, and helping presence. Best Mother For all the mothers of the world, there was once a woman sitting in a secluded corner admiring the beauty of Mother Nature while caressing and holding a baby in her arms. 
the atmosphere and everything around her was very conducive to meditation with God. As she felt the desire to speak to God, to that presence within her, she asked him, My father, is there anything purer and more sublime in the world than the love I feel for my son? My daughter, she felt within her this presence answer her, Greater and purer love than the love I have for all of you, my children, does not exist nor can it ever exist. I endowed you with this motherly love, so that you may have a full idea of how great is the love I feel for all my children, so that you may serve as a channel through which I may express this love. Those you call your children are not your children. They came through you, but not from you. As the world I created all that is similar is attracted to each other, their souls chose you to serve as their guardian and guide, and I acquiesced. But remember, though they are with you, they are not yours. You may put all your love into them, but not your thoughts. I endowed them with their own mind and they have their own thoughts. You may give shelter and food in the sanctuary of your home to their bodies, but not to their souls, for these dwell in the sanctuary of my presence, which no one can see, though they can feel. Remember the words of your elder brother Jesus, when he said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You can help them to attain that kingdom, not so much by your words, as by your examples in and out of the sanctuary of your home. You can love them like nothing else in the world, but you cannot force them to love you. That reciprocal love will germinate in them spontaneously if you know how to cultivate it well. You, as a loving mother, are the blessed tree who gives everything to the fruit so that it may be juicier and sweeter for the delight of others, which is my delight, so that its seeds may perpetuate the eternity of life. As this presence in her finished speaking to her, the woman stood up and, holding the child tighter than ever in her arms, went on her way, feeling like a better mother than before. True Friendship I love you, not for what you are, but for what I am when I am with you. I love you, not for what you have made of yourself, but for what you are making of me. I love you for that of me that you are making manifest. I love you because you laid your hand on my heart and overlooked everything frivolous and contemptible that you could not fail to see in it, and you brought to light all that was beautiful and radiant in it without anyone else deigning to delve deep enough to find it. I love you for ignoring the vain in me and grasping only the possibilities of good that are in me. I love you for closing my eyes to what is discordant in me and increasing my musicality with your reverent attention. I love you because with the timbers of my life you helped me to build not a tavern, but a temple, and with the words in my life, not a counterclaim, but a song. I love you because you have done more than any creed could do to make me happy. You have done it simply by being yourself. After all, that's what being friendly is all about. I am on the path of truth. If I religiously comply with the following 15 points, 1. If I always look for the good in every person, situation, or thing. When something strange happens, something that at the moment does not seem favorable to us, it may be for the good, although at the beginning we do not appreciate it, we should say, I bless the good that is in this situation, I ask that it show me ITS good face, I want TOC it. 2. If I resolutely turn my back on the past, good or bad. If one thinks of the past, with the mind one makes it return and it can happen again. Neither should one evoke the pleasant or good that has been in it, because always together with the good there are mixtures of negative influences which come back to live together with the good. It is necessary to live in the present, beautifying it, making it better in everything that depends on us. If I forgive everyone, without exception, and I forgive myself, with all my heart. It is not possible to forgive the same thing twice, it is enough once and that is already erased. It is enough to say, I forgive, and any resentment that remains within us, surrender it to our inner Christ, he will take care of dissolving it. 
If I see my daily obligation as something sacred and I fulfill it to the fullest, whether I like it or not. This does not mean that we must resign ourselves to perform a thankless task for life. No, let us perform what we have to do the best we can and know how, with joy, but with our eyes set on something we like better, which will surely come to us in the not too distant future. Resignation is not recommended, but the spirit of obedience, collaboration, optimism, and dynamism in whatever we have to do. If I take measures to manifest a healthy body and to form a harmonious environment around me, we should not be prejudiced against anything. Everything that God made is good and has its usefulness. The point is to use everything wisely, in moderation, because it is the abuse that damages, that breaks the harmony of health. Even poisonous substances, used in the right measure, are wonderful means of healing. If you like guava and think it hurts you, it will hurt you. But if you think that God made it and God did nothing harmful, you will eat the guava moderately and it will not do you any harm, but on the contrary, it will give you pleasure and you will bring to your body vital substances necessary for its sustenance. If you eat an exaggerated amount of guavas and sin you will bear the penance, you will get indigestion, not caused by the guava itself, but by your exaggeration. You cannot break the rhythm because the equilibrium is broken, and when the equilibrium is broken, the imbalance appears, the disease. If I try to serve others moderately, without interfering with their freedom, their free will, without causing them inconvenience, it is always good to give the help that is asked of us with joy, offering it only in cases where the need is very manifest. It is necessary to have a spirit of cooperation without absorbing the person with whom we cooperate or whom we help, but to push him, to let him walk alone, otherwise we would impede his natural development. If I take every opportunity to teach the truth wisely, without forcing the will of the disciple, if you see that he does not pay attention to you or makes fun of your words, change the subject, that soul is not yet ready, it has not yet reached the degree of evolution necessary to understand the truth, let it follow its path. Eternal wisdom is in charge of him and will teach him in due time. Here is a parable of Omato Nervo. If someone asks you for a glass of water, offer it to him delicately and place a fragrant rose petal on top of the water. If you see that person take the petal delicately between his fingers, suck it with friction and keep it jealously between the pages of a book, give him the whole rose. If, on the other hand, the person throws the petal rudely to the ground to drink the water, when he asks you again for water, give it to him clean and transparent but without the petal. If I rigidly avoid criticism, remember the law of correspondence. When you criticize someone else and think badly of him, someone else will in turn think badly of you or speak badly of you. Never use I am or he I s in an unpremeditated manner. I am is the affirmation of God in us. I am myopic. You are criticizing yourself. You are claiming to possess a condition that does not favor you and from that very moment you begin to possess it. Fulano is a thief. With this affirmation you tie him to that condition of thief and you make him a thief without remedy. It is better to say Fulano like T.O. steal things and not Fulano is. And the best thing is not to criticize. 9. If I dedicate daily at least a quarter of an hour to meditation or prayer. Prayer is talking with God. Meditation is thoughtful prayer. Both put you in contact with your Creator. He is always waiting for you, attentive at all times to the moment when you turn to Him, with a pure heart and a mind set on high. The fruits of prayer are immense. Prayer is the door to spiritual and material wealth. You just have to know how to pray. It is very convenient in cases where something is urgently needed to make a chain with several believers to agree and at the same exact time to pray for the same need. The effects are amazing. 10. If I read at least seven verses of the Bible daily. The book of Psalms is especially recommended, and the Bible read with preference Psalms 23, 37, 46, and 91. Also the third chapter. Ecclesiastes contains wonderful teachings. 
You can and should read it repeatedly every day, because these readings contain such profound teachings that every day you will find in them a new truth that you did not notice yesterday. The Bible is a book to be read all your life. If I decree and claim spiritual understanding for myself, I must ask divine wisdom to grant me my share of wisdom to enlighten my intelligence with its light. You already know that your mind is the divine mind, that all the wisdom of God is in your mind-seeking expression, and you with your attitude you must open the door to that manifestation of the wisdom of God in you, knowing that you possess nothing by yourself, that every attribute comes to you from the eminent source which is God, that his presence represented by seven colors in the form of a halo around the center which is blue, emanates constantly towards you all the gifts of truth. Your labor is to put yourself in a position to receive them, and you will receive them. 12. If I am in the habit of giving God my first thought when I get up, I thank Him for His love and bless His name. 13. If I say the verb every day in favor of humanity. The verb is the word. If you use it in your favor and at the same time in favor of all humanity, your aura expands, becomes more luminous, you advance. 14. If I practice Jesus' golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If I understand that everything I see is only an image and that everything can be transformed into good. There is a very beautiful metaphysical thought that says, evil does not exist, there is only the absence of good. If you desire demonstrations, and by demonstrations we mean every purpose achieved within the metaphysical laws, ask yourself at the end of each week if you have fully observed these 15 points. If you find that you fail in some of them, do not get discouraged, start again. Remember the spider's web that starts over as many times as it is broken. Remember that on his way to Calvary, Christ fell several times, but always got up to continue the march and crown the summit. Do the same. Recommendations When you enter a place and find a negative atmosphere of criticism or pessimism, if this atmosphere is formed in your own room, say the following prayer. I recognize and bless the inner Christ in each of you or those present here, and I decree harmony among you and in my house. You will see how the atmosphere is immediately purified, how conversations change, how everything is transformed towards the good. The divine and living Christ dwells in this house. His presence is felt as peace and order in our life, love in our path, health in our body, and prosperity in our business. We think only good, see only good, and find only good. Praise God. May I overcome the habit of anger. O oh, eternal tranquility, save me from the attacks of fury and agitation, which alter the nerves and cloud the brain. Help me to banish the habit of anger, which brings unhappiness to me and to those with me. Do not let me indulge in this evil and selfish habit that tries to alienate me, to keep me away from the affection of my beloved friends. May it never invigorate the feelings and anger that rekindle the scorching flames of wrath. O Queen of Stillness, when I become angry or enraged, place before me a mirror of inner discipline, so that I may see myself disfigured by the ugliness of raging passion, preventing me from appearing before others with a face marred by indignation. May my difficulties in life be solved through pure thoughts and loving actions that destroy hatred and selfishness. Bless me, that I may be healed of my wounds of anger with the remedy of self-respect, and that I may also help to heal others of their ills of anger with the balm of my kindness. O oh, Infinite Spirit, make me understand at all times that even my worst enemy is always my brother, and that as you love me, you love him. Guide for the Metaphysical Woman if you offer God your daily work as the performance of your part in His universal plan, you will feel happy doing it. For your life. 1. Husband first before you. 2. Willing to live for Him and for Him. 3. To be His wife and not His man. 
for your home. One, love, home. What you do is your duty. For walls are warm because of your presence, which is the chalice of light in them. For walls are not left because they grow cold. The chalice never leaves the tabernacle. Two, gentleness, to sweep, to cook, to pick up human dirt. To do it without displeasure and to know that without displeasure only you can do it. Purity, it is the truth. If there is a lie, there is no purity. For your life. 1. Patience, it is the science of peace. 2. Order, plan before everything you do. 3. Virtue, you are the mirror where your children look at themselves. Remember that. For your children. 1. Dedication, from the moment they open their eyes until they die, they will take away the air you breathe. It is not a kindness that you give them, it is your duty. You owe them your love, your care, education, understanding, you owe them everything. Remember that what is owed must be paid. Guide for the Metaphysical Man For your life, the wife is your other half, your partner. Nothing should come before the affection and respect you owe her. She must come before you in your feelings, and at all times you must think that you are committed to protect her for life. 2. Willing to live for her and for her. 3. Be her husband, not everybody's man. For your home. 1. Love, home. To sustain it is your duty. A home without the presence of the companion dies of cold. You are the representative of God there, where he gave you the parental authority. Honor that choice and fulfill it to the fullest. 2. Sweetness. Even if your work is heavy and you return home tired, go back in search of a lap where love awaits you, and do not unload there your anger and bitterness. Preserve that sacred place as the oasis for your rest. Purity. It is the truth. If there is a lie, there is no purity. For your life. 1. Patience. This is the science of peace. 2. Order. Plan before everything you do. Virtue. Your attitude sets the tone at home, both for your wife and children. Try to deserve the respect you demand. For your children. 1. Dedication. From the moment they open their eyes until they die, they will take away the air you breathe. It is not a kindness that you give them, it is your duty. You owe them your love. Your care, education, understanding, you owe them everything. Remember that what is owed must be paid. I place myself, my family, and all my affairs in the loving hands of the Father. Placing myself, my loved ones, and all my affairs in the loving hands of the Father brings a great sense of peace and relief to my soul. I have nothing to fear, for the love of God surrounds, enfolds, and protects me. I need not be anxious about the outcome of any situation, because God is present in it and in all the people involved in it. God is the power that works for good and makes things right. I do not fret or worry about my loved ones, for I place them lovingly in the hands of the Father. I entrust His Spirit in them to guide them, to be their light and inspiration, to show them the way. I don't get impatient because I know that at the right time and in the right way, the answers will come. I will be shown what to do. I place myself, my loved ones, and all my affairs in the loving hands of the Father. Exercise recommended by St. Germain Before going to sleep, quiet your mind and body first. Then visualize and try to feel your body enveloped in a radiant white light. For the first five minutes feel intensely the connection between your outer body and the great presence of God within you, focusing your attention on the heart and seeing it as a great golden sun. The next step is to affirm, I accept the fullness of my loving presence and my pure Christ. I am protected, enlightened, supplied by the light. I love and bless the light. Intensify now the light in every cell of your body for 10 minutes. 
Try to feel it in every atom of your body and mind deeply. The light is the kingdom. Enter into it and be at peace. Practice it. After 10 days, increase the practice to twice daily. Then after another 10 days, do it three times, morning, noon, and night. Son and daughter, try this with great determination. God in you is your victory. I am the radiant light of divine love, wisdom, and faith, kindled in the heart and mind of every being throughout the earth. Before starting to eat, we thank you, Father, for this food that your divine providence provides us. May it never be lacking to us, nor to our children, nor to any of our brothers and sisters on earth. Blessed are our angel providers and our beloved and ascended Master Lady Nada. Blessed and prosperous are the people who have worked so that we have this food on our table. Blessed and ascended be the animals and plants that have given their lives for us. Likewise, blessed and ascended be the elementals of fire, water, air, and earth who work for us. If any elemental is attached to a life stream, I ask that it be unbound and ascended. In the name of my almighty and great presence, I am I decree that the will not to kill be manifested in every man. So we decree from now on and for now the vegetarian diet. Thank you, Father. You heard us. It is not advisable to attempt to carry the burden of sorrows and mental pain without divine help, for their weight is more than the personality can bear. The Violet Flame If we do not accept that the truth is within us, we have no chance of understanding the truth that is exposed to us. The I Am Presence is the only inner life stream expressing itself. The lower vehicles or the human being are the temple of the living God. Every image in him manifests in his experience. This has been Metaphysics for Daily Life Written by St. Germain